So to show Emily I was repentant so I wouldn't lose her and the kids, I turned myself in. Again. Hi, Bishop. I'm sorry to call you so late. It's Brother Fales. Fales? We shook hands once at church? I have been unfaithful. And it hasn't been with a woman. Get a blood test? Okay. Sure. Sure, I can meet you tomorrow. Two o'clock. See you then. He was a sincere man with white hair, a kind round face, and glasses. Kind of like Santa Claus. <laughs> Brother Stephen! We all have something in this life that we have to overcome. I deal with swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I was then sent on to the next ecclesiastical leader, the stake president. I remember walking into the stake center next door, one of the conveniences of living in Utah. I checked in with the executive secretary who sat behind the glass. It felt so clinical. I couldn't believe it was actually me sitting there. Would I be excommunicated? And was an excommunication for the wicked? How would I come to this? I'd only ever wanted to be a good boy and do what was right. If I were exed, I wouldn't be allowed to take the sacrament or pay tithing or pray or sing in church again. The Holy Ghost would no longer be with me. And beyond this, I would be barred from seeing my children in the afterlife. Memories of my years of church participation flooded me. Like most Mormons. Church was my life. Getting baptized by my dad when I was eight. Getting blessings from him when I was sick. Passing the sacrament to my mother for the first time when I was 12 in my new white shirt and tie. Wore Christmas parties, steak road shows, scouting and church sports, youth dances and firesides. <laughs> Good times. Good people. And the temple, everyone dressed in white. I love just sitting in the chapel, listening to the hymns played on the organ or praying in the celestial room. Quiet, peaceful, holy, holiness to the Lord. I believed it with all my heart, and every dream I'd ever had was centered around the church. Just then, the stake president opened his office door and stepped out. The bishop said I'd really like him. You must be Brother Fales. Welcome. It must be very difficult for you to be here. Thank you for coming. The Lord loves you. That's what I imagined him saying. <laughs> what I got was, now, what's your name? I was stunned. I was the only one there. I mean, surely my name was on his Franklin Covey planner. <laughs> Brother Fails? I went in his office. I can't believe you didn't know my name. Do you even know why I'm here? Yes, I know why you're here. It was a little thing, not knowing my name. But to me, it was huge. It summed up my whole experience growing up in the church. I always felt I needed to win the brethren's approval. I wanted them to like me. I wanted to be like them, to be noticed. I was invisible. No matter what I did or how well I did it, I felt I was never accepted or appreciated for who I was. I felt I knew what it must be like to be a woman in this church. We didn't start off well. The usual opening prayer was not offered, and he asked me to define sin. How did I feel about sin? Did I think I had sinned? We weren't getting anywhere. I didn't have the right answers anymore. My absolutes were failing me, and I, I couldn't say what he needed or wanted to hear. Mr. Stake President, it's been doctrine this and dogma that my whole life. Work, 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 work out your salvation, never being worthy enough of God's love. Where is the love? He told me they needed to keep the church pure. I told him the church was a socioeconomic, political, tax-exempt, multinational corporation posing as the kingdom of God on earth. It just came out. He wanted to have the church court right away. It was set for the next Sunday. 
at 7 a.m. It was the middle of July. I was working two jobs, I was repainting the house, I was writing a new Mormon musical, I was preparing to throw a big birthday bash for my wife, and in all my spare time, I was daddy. And in the midst of everything, my church membership and my marriage were at stake. No. No, my marriage wasn't just at stake. It was over. I had never seen Emily with such resolve. And as loving as her mother was to me, Carolyn was pressing her daughter hard to end this marriage immediately. It's clear as I was going into this with everything to lose, including salvation. In some ways, it's like attending your own funeral. I put on my Sunday best and was ready when the bishop came by to accompany me to my disciplinary council, or court of love, as they call it. When the high counselors all arrived, the grand jury, I was led into the room. There must have been about 20 men all dressed in dark suits and power ties. They all rose. No one was smiling. They led me to the head of this enormous oak table where I sat next to the stake president. He had the secretary read the charge. Homosexuality. Then they turned the time over to me, the guest of honor. I was allowed to tell these men, whom I had never seen before, my story. I told them everything. I spoke my truth. One brother fell asleep, another checked his watch. They did have many other church meetings ahead of them. After I finished, they wanted to ask me a few final questions. What was my most spiritual experience? My wedding day, kneeling across the altar with Emily. I've been crying throughout the whole thing. I felt God had given me such a precious gift. Who else would marry a gay man? I never wanted to hurt her. I intended to be with her forever. Was being in the arts causing my homosexuality? I only sleep with doctors, lawyers, and cowboys, never other actors. <laughs> Have I ever had sex with a minor? No, I'm into men. Have I ever sexually abused my son? I was as good a father as anyone in that room. Did they ask that question to straight men? Did they ask if they had ever sexually abused their daughters? I looked them right in the eye. No. Then they asked me to please leave the room so that they could discuss and pray. I was expendable. I knew they were not trying to talk Emily into working things out. In this case, divorce certainly seemed justified. And when would the next teenager come home after a Sodom and Gomorrah lesson in church and try to commit suicide? Brothers and sisters, when the spiritual death is total, it were better that such a man were never born. They brought me back after 10 minutes, and the stake president said that they had decided to excommunicate me. And then he proceeded to pronounce my sentence in a formal declaration they are required to read to everyone. I just folded my arms, closed my eyes, and bowed my head. His voice became full and resonant. Brother Fails, this is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is the kingdom of God on earth. Because you have transgressed, I can't remember you will no all that was said. Be allowed to associate I just remember how I felt. Your name will be and I wasn't expecting to feel church. this way. His voice faded out as this warm feeling of peace and truth washed over me as another voice said, Stephen, I know who you are, and I am so much bigger than this church.